Hey there aquatic enthusiasts! Put together a little video here on fish watching in Banff National Park. It's a great place to check out fish and uh, the easiest place to start out is just south of the town side of Banff. If you go down Main Street in Banff and across the Bow River is the Cave and Basin Interpretive Center. If you go to the Cave and Basin Interpretive Center Hang a left right when you get there and start going up the steps. You'll get to the top of the Cave and Basin Hot Springs. And uh, this is what it looks like up there. This is where the endangered Banff Springs snail is. So make sure you don't <clears throat> put your hands in the water or touch anything while you're up there because uh, we want to make sure that it's preserved. And uh, as you go down, uh, the spring actually goes right underneath the stairs, which is pretty cool. And uh, there's a lot of algae that's um, apparent in the upper part. It's really mineral rich, and it's basically the start of the food source. You can see some cyanobacteria on here as well. It's pretty hot water. And uh, that white algae is basically the start of the food web there. And there's some interpretive signs that explain it. Now, one of my favorite spots is near the top there. And there's a, this white algae um, that grows in one of the parts of the spring. And it's just mesmerizing to watch. It's super cool. I could watch it all day long. But eventually, you gotta, you got to move. Um, so the spring goes down through... Um, a number of little crevices. There's other springs that come in. There's actually a number of springs that uh, create the cave and basin uh, spring system, and they're all warm. So uh, there's a lot of lush vegetation around it because it's warm all year long and uh, gives the vegetation a good opportunity to grow. Springs come together and uh, they go down to below the interpretive center. Some of it is manipulated, so you'll see that man has intervened in some spots to preserve the boardwalk, I'd imagine. But because there's so many little springs that come in, you'll see this white algae come. I think it's probably related to the temperature of the water that uh, is at the various sites. But there's lots of little waterfalls down there. This is below the interpretive center now. Um, and you'll see that uh, it's really beautiful. It's just a beautiful sort of a place to uh, spend some time and uh, watch some fish. So there's fish right below the waterfall here. Uh, this is where you really start to see um, more fish. Uh, these are mosquito fish here, and uh, the population is fairly dense. I didn't see any mollies in this area here, but uh, plenty of mosquito fish. And then as you move a little bit further down, you'll see that there's more spring influence, a lot more of the white algae. But uh, anywhere where there's a little bit of slowing down of the water flow, you'll see mosquito fish. They're absolutely everywhere. They've uh, definitely taken over most of the upper part of the habitat in the springs. And uh, the white algae kind of tends to change over to filamentous algae. The Banff longnose dace, uh, there's some interpretive signs here for it, um, was the native fish, but uh, mosquito fish, mollies, and a whole host of other tropical fish were introduced in here, and they've basically taken over, and uh, they believe the Banff longnose dace is actually extinct now. Uh, but you'll see that uh, there's also has been jewel cichlids in the system. I haven't seen them for a long time. Um, but uh, as you go down further, you get to a marshy area, which you're not allowed to go in, so don't go in there. You'll mess up the flora and fauna, um, but it goes into a bigger pond. And uh, they do have a boardwalk created so that you can go to where the cave and basin springs go into the pond. And uh, you can check out the fish there, and also there's tons of birds around there as well. Um, and they've got a bit of an interpretive signage there as well. Um, so this is uh, right near where the springs go into the pond. And you can see there's lots of mosquito fish and lots of mollies too. So the bigger fish in there are mollies. Uh, you can see the males. The males are more colorful. They're also creating some chaos in there being territorial and searching for mates and fighting a little bit. You can see a male just went flying through there. Um, but they're pretty cool and really beautiful. Uh, and it's a really quiet sort of a place. There's not a ton of people down there all the time. It's a really relaxing opportunity to watch the fish. I just laid here on the boardwalk and, and filmed and watched them for, I don't know, 
half an hour or 45 minutes. There's a few of these little channels that go through the aquatic vegetation and uh, you can check them out and you can see how beautiful the uh, male sailfin mollies are. Really a pretty fish. Um, this area used to be a lot deeper and you could see jewel cichlids in here which are also stunningly beautiful. They just glowed red out in the shallows but uh, the pond level is uh, decreased over the years so it's not nearly as high. I haven't seen jewel cichlids there for a long time but uh, you can see that uh, it's probably about I don't know 50 meters or 100 meters from where it goes into the pond now. Uh, so the jewel cichlids may be out there further, but you're not allowed to trample the place. The other opportunity for fish watching, which is quite abundant, are the small streams and springs that uh, go into the Bow River, um, upstream and downstream of Banff. There's lots in Canmore, right in the middle of the town. And uh, there's lots of opportunities here to see uh, different trout species mostly. Sometimes you can see whitefish, but most of the time it's trout, and most of the time for trout it's brook trout, um, which are an introduced species that have uh, successfully populated most of Banff. <laughs> so they're um, not a native species, but there is the opportunity to see native cutthroat trout or bull trout there. Um, also other introduced species include brown trout and uh, introduced cutthroat trout. So there's not only the native but introduced cutthroat as well. And uh, non-native rainbow trout and brown trout as well. Um, and they can be seen in the springs typically uh, throughout most of the year. Uh, most of the springs are open all year long. As you go along the highway there, you'll see that there's a lot of clear springs going into the Bow River, and you can go out and check them out. Just make sure when you go out and go through the little gates that are along the fences, uh, along the highway beside the park, that uh, you close the gate and bring your bear spray and some bear bells because there are bears in the area. Uh, they usually run the other way when people come around, but uh, you don't want to find out if you've if you've run into a, a hungry bear. So make sure you got your bear spray and uh, be aware that they're there. I usually just say, hey, bear, when I'm walking out there every once in a while, just because you don't want to walk, walk up on them and surprise them. So when you're looking for fish in these uh, small streams, you want to walk along slowly, especially look behind a uh, habitat like fallen logs or rocks, and you can often see brook trout. Brook trout are very abundant in the park. The habitat is absolutely pristine, so you have a pretty high abundance of fish species, but most of them are exotic ones, so they are introduced. But they're still cool to watch anyways. If you look close at this brook trout here, you can identify it by uh, the white tips on its pelvic and pectoral fins, and it's followed by black and orange. Um, you can also see if you were to, actually you can fish here as well too, if you were to pick it up, you could see black markings in its dorsal fin and worm-like markings on its back. Um, they're quite common, they'll probably be the most common uh, fish that you'll see while you're in here. And uh, pretty easy to, to find as long as you're quiet and you move along slowly. Um, but uh, there are other species of fish in here, and uh, I was lucky enough while I was filming this um, little brook trout here that uh, bull trout happened to come by, which is a native species, so I was super pumped about that. And uh, bull trout, they are similar looking to brookies. They have the white leading edges on their fins. Um, but they don't have black in their dorsal fin, and they don't have the black markings in the pelvic and pectoral fins uh, right behind the, the white. And you'll see this little guy come swinging by here pretty quick. He uh, it was just so lucky that I was able to, to, to get a, some video of this little guy. You can see him here. He's a bit more elongated as well, um, and they have more of a grayish body. They've got little pink markings on their side as well but there's no black in the dorsal fin so if you're angling make sure no black throw it back um banff park is pretty progressive they've been um putting together some restoration efforts for native species removing non-native uh, which is really commendable but i'll leave you with uh some video and uh with sound so you can see what it's like to experience fish watching in banff without me talking